Hello everyone, you're watching the channel Military TV. The venerable Humvee was the first fielded to combat units in the mid-1980s. It had impressive mobility, it was fast and extremely reliable. But beginning in 2004, the vehicle that was designed for the European battlefield began to struggle when it faced a determined Iraqi insurgency that fought with improvised explosive devices or IEDs. Soon, images of burnt-out, twisted Humvees became a symbol of America's struggle to cope with a new, horrific type of warfare. The military eventually replaced many Humvees with heavy-duty vehicles called MRAPs designed specifically to withstand roadside bombs, but they were slow, top-heavy, and had limited capability off-road. While many short-term efforts to protect troops were launched, the Pentagon was determined to develop a long-lasting solution. It first approved the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, JLTV, as a program of record in 2006. It took almost a decade for the JLTV to become a reality, but in August 2015, Oshkosh Corporation was selected over Lockheed Martin Corporation and AM General LLC to build the JLTV for the Army and the Marine Corps, a program that could exceed $30 billion to meet the current joint service requirement. After over three decades of faithful service, the United States Army and Marine Corps are replacing the AM General Humvee in frontline service with the Oshkosh JLTV. Although Humvees will continue to serve behind the scenes with the Army and Marines until 2050, the new JLTV is as much as a technology leap over the Humvee as the Humvee was to the Jeep-like Ford M151 before it. It's not just that JLTV can easily negotiate any type of terrain and is many times more reliable than any comparable vehicle, but it can take a hit from enemy small arms, machine guns, or rockets and keep fighting. That core requirement of its design emerged from a decade of fighting insurgents in Southwest Asia, where the Army constantly encountered threats that nobody had expected, like improvised explosive devices under the vehicle or shaped charges striking from above. According to RealClearDefense.com, the JLTV is designed to be a partial replacement for the venerable high-mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle or Humvee. With a more powerful engine than the Humvee, the JLTV is able to regain the mobility and speed that were lost when the Humvees were up-armored in order to add protection against IEDs. The JLTV is intended to perform a range of missions, including moving supplies and personnel, and serving as a platform for close combat weapons such as anti-tank guided missiles and heavy guns. JLTV is a big program. The Army recently announced that it was advancing the JLTV to full rate production and plans to replace around half its Humvees, around 49,000 vehicles, with JLTVs. The Marine Corps decided to nearly double the size of their planned procurement of JLTVs from 9,000 to around 15,000, completely replacing their current inventory of Humvees. Moreover, the JLTV has already achieved initial operational capabilities with the Marines two years ahead of schedule. The JLTV is based around Oshkosh's TAK-4I, I for intelligent, independent suspension system. Around 26,000 military vehicles are fitted with an earlier version of the system, these including the Oshkosh Medium Tactical Vehicle Replacement, Oshkosh Logistic Vehicle System Replacement, and Oshkosh MRAP All-Terrain Vehicle. The TAK-4 system has also been retrofitted to the Force Protection Incorporated Cougar and BAE Systems RG-33 MRAPs. The majority of systems to date have been coil-sprung. The TAK-4I version fitted to the JLTV remains undisclosed but is not coil sprung and is of the variant adjustable ride height type with up to 20 inches 51 centimeters of wheel travel, 25% more than the current standard. The JLTV's suspension-aided egress system capability levels side to side and front to rear on slopes or grades when selected by the operator. The front and rear suspension height can also be independently controlled for ship and transportability. The suspension system has ride height control at all four wheels. Um, it uses a Duramax uh, V8 engine, much like you would find in a, a, a Silverado or a Sierra pickup truck uh, that's actually been modified by Gail Banks, for any of you NASCAR fans. Uh, and then we use an Allison uh, modified 
transmission as well. So to the max extent possible, we used a lot of commercial technologies with the powertrain, etc. Motive power is provided by a digitally controlled Gale Banks Engineering 866T V8 diesel. This based on the architecture of the General Motors Duramax LML. Power output is 340 horsepower. In commercial use, power output of the standard Duramax LML engine is currently up to 397 horsepower, 296 kilowatts at 3000 RPM. Production of the Duramax LML engine concluded in 2017, the unit replaced by the Duramax LP5. JLTV A1 models that were introduced in 2017 are powered by a derivation of this engine. An Allison 2500 SP 6-speed fully automatic transmission is fitted. The JLTV has been designed to comply with the U.S. Army's long-term armor strategy. The long-term armor strategy system follows an A-kit, B-kit principle with vehicles designed fitted for but not with protection. Protection kits can be installed and uninstalled from vehicles in the field using only basic tools. The A-kit is fitted on the production line and is a combination of a limited amount of armoring in difficult to access areas of the vehicle, together with a significant amount of armor installation attachments and required support structures. The bulk of the armor, the B-kit, is installed in the field on an as-required basis. Two soldiers can install B-Kit armor in five hours. An 800-pound RPG protection kit can be installed in two hours at field-level maintenance and completed by the crew within 30 minutes. The JLTV offers protection levels greater than those of up-armored Humvee and comparable to those of the original MRAP class designs, but in an overall vehicle package that is considerably smaller and lighter than vehicles procured under the U.S. Marine's MRAP procurement. The benefits of the A-kit, B-kit principle are that armor is only fitted when required, reducing vehicle wear and tear and, by default, whole life cycle costs. Improvements and or upgrades to armor are also far easier to integrate into an applique solution. No quantity for JLTV armoring kits has yet been disclosed, but it's anticipated that the estimated $65,000 kits will be procured on a one-kit to three-vehicle basis. The overall protection will include a small liner to minimize perforation effects within a vehicle when the vehicle takes hostile fire. The JLTV also has an automatic fire extinguishing system to protect the crew cabin. Fuel tanks are mounted externally and shielded by the JLTV structure. Each crew seat has a combined seat and blast restraint device. Ingress time for a crew of four in combat equipment is 30 seconds or less. Egress with B-kit doors is within 10 seconds. The only weight-related data officially released includes a gross vehicle weight of 10,266 kilograms. Payload for the two-door variant is quoted as 2,318 kilograms. Payload for the four-door variant is quoted at 1,590 kilograms. The USMC require a vehicle that can be transported by their current and planned systems. In April 2009, Marine Corps Command General James Conway warned that the Marines will not buy a vehicle that is 20,000 pounds. Requirements called for the cabin heater to raise the crew compartment temperature from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 40 degrees Celsius, to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius in one hour. The air conditioner should drop the temperature from 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 49 degrees Celsius, to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius within 40 minutes. The JLTV was to be equipped with a diagnostic monitoring system that will electronically alert the operator of equipment failures so that they can be fixed. The electronic monitoring will observe the fuel, air intake, engine, cooling, transmission, energy storage, power generation, and vehicle speed, as well as other systems. JLTV is transportable by sea, rail, and air. The JLTV is transportable on all classes of ocean-going transport ships with minimal disassembly. It was required to be rail transportable on Conus and NATO country railways. 
Air transportability will be by fixed-wing aircraft as large or larger than the C-130 Hercules and sling-loadable with rotary-wing aircraft such as the CH-47 or MH-47 and CH-53. The proposed ambulance variant was to be air-droppable by C-5 and C-17 fixed-wing aircraft. The JLTV can be prepared in 30 minutes for transport by aircraft, maritime prepositioning for ships or rail. This is aided by an adjustable height suspension.